mortgage interest. You can claim this as a deduction using the finance allowance. But how does it work? Let's have a detailed look today. Hi, I'm Kimberly Shatcock, qualified chartered accountant, property investor and entrepreneur. Let's sit down and have a chat. We're going to dive in today into two years examples of how the Section 24 tax relief works for mortgage interest. We're going to start with one year and do the calculation and then we're going to follow on to the next year so you can see how things fit together when you can't fully utilise the relief. So let's dive in. In our example today, we're going to be looking at the tax year 22-23. Now, for our example, we've got a salary of 36,000, rents of 20,000, mortgage interest of 15,000, and other repairs and other expenses that are non-financial of 7,000. So hopefully this gives us all the information we need to start now looking at our tax computation. So to start off on our tax computation, we now need to look at a couple of entries. So now we're going to add in our salary before tax. So our salary that we said before was our 36,000. Now we need to now look at our rental information and we've got rents of 20,000 less our non-financial costs. So that is a key difference here that we need to consider and that is of 7,000. So we can now calculate what our property profits are of 13,000 which gives us a total income that we are going to consider of 49,000. So as you can see here very close to the tax bracket but let's not worry about that for now. Now we're going to start our tax count calculation but we will have to jump off it in a second but let's get started with the tax calculation that we have to do so our tax calculation starts with what is our personal allowance and for everyone at this point in time for this tax year it is 12,570 so we can take that off because that is going to be at zero percent now, then for the remainder of this 49,000, which is going to be at the basic rate band, we have 36,430 at 20%. And that 20%, having used my calculator in the background, comes to 7,286. So that means having got our personal allowance to give us zero that pounds on our 12,570. On the 36,430, 20%, we've got 7,286. Our total tax at present to pay is 7,286. And you might go, but wait a minute, you said we can claim our finance costs, we can claim that mortgage interest, and yes, we can. The only thing is we need to look at something before we can decide what figure we are going to be using. Now, what we can do is reduce our tax bill by a specific number, but this is a little more complicated than just taking one number. There are three numbers we need to consider before we can determine exactly what the approach is. So we need to start by looking at our tax reduction is the lower of and the first figure is our finance costs the second figure is our property profits and the third figure is our adjusted total income so our finance costs if I move back up the page is our 15,000 which we can see here. So let's put 15,000 in. Our property profits, if we go back up, are our 20,000 plus our 13,000 here. So 
moving back down, I can show us our 13,000. Now our adjusted total income is our 49,000. So we can therefore take the lowest of these three numbers, which in this case is our 13,000. So we're going to take 13,000 at 20%. So we can come back up to our calculation and go our finance cost reduction is therefore 13,000 at 20%, which is 2,600, which means our actual tax bill that we'll have to pay is going to be 4,686, which hopefully you can see there. Now, the only thing that we probably need to note now is, well, we've only actually used 13,000 of our total 15,000 finance costs. So what that actually means is we can do our 15,000, take away 13,000, to give us a nice 2,000, we don't lose them, they are carried forward. So our final position is we have a tax bill of 4,686 and we've got 2,000 of our finance costs carried forward. So that's our calculation for our tax year 22-23. So let's jump into a new sheet and look at tax year 23-24. So let's jump into the future, which I appreciate is a bit of a craziness, but let's just go forward and see what would happen in the next tax year. So if we've got our salary, which we're going to keep at our 36,000, our rents, we're going to keep at our 20,000, our mortgage is going to be at the same figure of 15,000. And our non-finance costs, so repairs and other bits that we have to incur, that's gone down to 2,000 because we've had a reasonably steady year with things. So let's jump straight into our tax calculation. And this time we're going to start with, again, our salary before tax. Of 36,000. We're going to have our rents of 20,000 and our costs is only 2,000 this year. So overall our profits are going to be 18,000 so slightly higher and that puts our total income at a sum total of 54 so as you can see, we are now over the high rate tax threshold. So we are going to see some impact from section 24. So let's see how it fits together. So our tax calc will start with our personal allowance. So we are still allowed a personal allowance at this point of 12,570 for this tax year. So we've got zero pounds in tax there. Now we've got basic rate tax at 20% and this is for 37,700 of our income, which is going to give us a hefty tax bill of 7,540. Now, because we are over the high rate tax threshold, we've also got some at 40% and we've got 3,730 over that bracket so we have an additional 1,492 tax, giving us a total whopping tax bill of 9,032. Now I will mention now that obviously because I'm including a job in this and I've included salary before tax, there is some of that that will have been taxed at source. So you won't physically have to pay this 9,000, that's just the total that will be paid including any tax you've already paid in your employment. So let's look at our tax reduction, because again, we are going to be able to deduct something for our finance 
costs, but the question is what? So our tax reduction is therefore going to be the lower of, as we did last time. So our finance costs is our first one, which for this occasion is actually going to be a different number because we've actually incurred 15,000 in the current year, but we also had our 2,000 brought forward. So our finance costs are actually going to be 17,000 this time. We also have our property profits, which if we jump back up a little bit here, we can see that this is going to be at 8,000. So there we go, 18,000. And then we've got adjusted total profits of, and if we go up back up again, we've got this figure here, 54,000. So that gives us our 54,000. So again, we need to look at which is the lowest figure. And on this occasion, it's going to be our 17,000. Now, because we are now using all our finance costs, we have no carried forward balance. So we have used everything that we have in place at this point in time. Now we can include this 17,000 up here at 20% and that takes off 3,400 off that tax bill. So our total tax bill now will go down to 5,632, which is payable. Now, as I've said, some of this may have already been paid in this job because you've probably already paid something. So the key things here, whoops. we've got now tax at 5,632 and we've also got no carried forward balance. As you can see, the calculation can be quite simple or it can be quite complex. But the key thing here I want you to remember is that there is still tax relief for your mortgage interest. It just works in a slightly different way and there's a few complications depending on what happens in that tax year. Hopefully you've seen how the finance cost allowance works and how you go about claiming your mortgage interest following the changes of section 24. If you have any questions, then please do leave a comment. Please like the video and do subscribe to the channel. And let's make tax less taxing.